to Maria e Tufano after a pretty terrible night's sleep in the hut. I've woken up, it's just gone 7.30 a.m. The sun has risen and we are ready for another day's tramping. In fact, we are ready to repeat what happened yesterday <laughs> in reverse. I'm going out, that's it. It's as far as we go on this trip. But it's nice to be on the west coast, looking at the west coast anyway. This here is the Kadamea River. This is where it meets the Leslie River, the river I walked along last night. Time to head on back to Flora Car Park, out of here. So long west coast, thank you. Yeah, good to see you. steamed through this clearing last night because it was dark I missed what maybe the old foundations of a hut Leslie hut Leslie clearing hut saw it on one of the signs that had been crossed out yesterday I'm gonna have a little look around see if I can find it Nothing obvious. There is this little monument, looks like a pot and a pile of rocks. It's just an old, old waypoint and a nice cast iron pot, isn't it? It's half past 11, roughly four hours since I left the hut. Although I did go down to the river first, so I didn't leave the hut till about eight. I've had a a nice quick lunch stop by the river and now I'm making my way up trudging my way up slowly up the side of the mountain towards Tableland through the forest at the moment that'll open out just as yesterday it turned into forest struggling a bit though truth be known I got a real throbbing headache today Back at Spludgeon's Rock Shelter, I crashed on the ground to eat some food and give myself a head massage when I was paid a visit by one of the locals, Weka. Just on my way out of the forest. Marauding back over the windy tops, the familiar sight of Mount Arthur and Gordon's Pyramid kept me going. Only, I'd applied a twist to my return route. I was going up and over Gordon's Pyramid and down another track called Clouston's to get back to the Flora Valley. And before all that, I was going to see what Potholes track was all about. Turns out, Potholes going a slightly different way back from Salisbury Hut. I've opted to follow the well, it's like the ominous, ominously known potholes track. And I've already fallen in a pothole. That happened a few minutes ago. And now, as you can see, I'm scampering up the side of a muddy hill with lots of tufts of grass in the way. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a marker. And it looks a little bit more like a track now. Ooh. For about maybe two minutes. So I've been trying to figure out where this stream is flowing. It's flowing in the direction of Tu Maunga, Gordon's Pyramid, and Tu Al Fadipapa, Mount Arthur. So it, the water has to go somewhere, right? We can't just flow up two mountains and get over them. And the answer is it flows into a cave. Presumably emerges somewhere else, maybe the Flora Valley somewhere. Anyway, 
behind that rock there, behind that little gorge area there, is the cave. And the stream disappears underground. Okay, this is it. We're on. Climbing Gordon's Pyramid. Doesn't look that far, does it? Take about 10 minutes. Gordon's Pyramid Summit. Oh. Yeah, it's windy. Oh, there's some showers now, but anyway. Time to go back down now. <laughs> Just left the tuss of grass, returned to the beach forest once again, but also for the final time. There's a little signpost, uh, 1 hour 15 down to the floor of Alley. It's the old magic watch saying, 55 minutes until sunset. I've only gone and done it again, eh? Oh, another big day on the way back. And this one I set off at 7.30 a.m. <laughs> okay, we're finishing in the dark again. I wondered if we were going to run into these on this adventure, and here they are. This is New Zealand's deadly stinging nettle. Onga onga. Stay well away. Do not attempt to touch them. Possibly responsible for one person's death in the past, and said to have caused the death of a horse as well at some point in history. I'm not sure how verified these claims are. I'll tell you one thing though. This is as close as you'll see me to them. Onga Onga, New Zealand's native stinging nettle. I'm absolutely knackered from this. 29 and a half kilometers at the moment. It's gonna be pretty much 34, 35 kilometers by the end of this. Basically 66, 67 kilometers in two days on foot. Up and down mountains. But it's been worth it. I got to visit one of my two favourite regions in this country, the West Coast, on foot from Tasman, hopped over the border. That was magic. Walking down that valley, Kadamir River, seeing all the, the ancient wonder that is that forest down there. It was just magic. Hardly anyone ever goes there. But New Zealand has a population of five million people. And just a fraction, just a fraction of a percent of people will ever have walked down that valley. Just incredible. Amazing place to be. Learnings from this then. I think the first real obvious one is everywhere I go from now on, I've got to take a head torch and make sure that head torch is fully charged. Other learnings. No, I was going to say don't bite off more than you can chew. No, it was fun. I have no regrets. Yeah, I arrived at the hut after dark. That's okay. Didn't break a leg. Didn't fall off a ravine. It's all good fun. It's really cold out tonight. Yeah, we are at 940 metres above sea level. That's something to do with it. But still. I'm walking uphill at quite a pace and I'm still cold and every inhalation near gives me brain freeze. Still only about 20 minutes to the car now, nearly finished. I did it! The 67 kilometer mega hike finished back where it started in the Flora car park, Tasman region. This trip had everything I wanted and more the wacky rock bivouacs of the Flora Valley, 
the savannah coloured tops of tableland, the blue mushrooms and native bird life of the Leslie Valley, those rainforest clad hillsides around Kadamea Bend and a summit climb on the return. It was a shame about the headache, but we still got there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please click the like button if so, and if you'd like to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. Cheers.